All right, year seven homework. Sorry, year five homework seven. We're going to quickly go through the answers for the organ donation comprehension. So, for the first question, we've got according to the author, registering to become an organ donor is which of the following? Uh, the answer for this one is option C, simple and free. Um, it says this up here. Whereabouts was it? There we go. The simple act only takes a few seconds. It's painless and free, right? Question two. We've got as used near the end of the passage. Which of the following is an example of an objector? So it, it's in bold. So if you look at the text, there's a word in bold called objector, which is pretty much explaining what it means to be an objector. So it's if you withdraw your decision or withdraw your consent to donate your organs. So you're not you're objecting to donating your organs. So which one of these is of the following isn't is a an objector? Well if you look at option A, Jason refusing to serve the military because he believes war is wrong. So that is going to be very similar to how an objector will refuse to donate their organs. If you look at the other options, participating in bullying, that's not that's not being an objector because an objector is in, in the case of organ donation, right? It's someone who it's where organ donation is mandatory and or it's, it's expected you're expected to do it and you're objecting to it and you're refusing to do it. Sort of part of the country's sort of I'd say probably you're you're opting in, right? So you're opted in for this. So you're automatically expected to donate your your organs, but you can opt out if you're an objector. And that's the same thing with the military. Some countries you might be opted in automatically, right? So option C, called stealing shoes. Again, that's not the same as objecting and refusing to do something. Dislikes visiting his grandmother, but he was so that's the opposite of, 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 of an objector, right? Okay, question three. An appeal to tradition is a fallacy in which the author or speaker assumes that something is correct simply because it has been done for a long time. What does the author, where does the author use this appeal to tradition? So again, it's explaining it in the question. It means that it's Basically, the author is assuming something is right just because it's been done for a long time. If we look at up here, right here, we've got just as blood donations have been common for hundreds of years, volunteers can donate other parts too. So that's the filter tradition where you're mentioning the fact that something else has been done for a long time and using that as a reason as why other something else is, is also being done, right? So option A, paragraph 1, is going to be the answer there. Question 4, one of the main weaknesses of this author's argument is that which of the following? So option C is going to be the answer here. She doesn't examine any counter-arguments against the universal donor registration. So if we look at the passage here. So... She doesn't use salt, so option D isn't in, isn't correct. So let me zoom in just so you guys can see a bit better. I'll not examine any counter arguments against the universal donor registration. So I'll go through this option in a moment. She does not explain why opt-in donor registration is a problem. She does not provide specific examples to support her argument. So it's clear here she provides specific examples of Germany and Austria and the different percentages of people that are organ donors. So she definitely does produce specific examples. Now she doesn't explain why an opt-in donor registration is a problem. She does do that. She explained already that people aren't opting in enough. Whereas if you switch to an opt-out, system that basically means you have to tell them if you don't want to be a, red, um, a donor otherwise you're a donor by default you see much more people will donate and obviously so you save more lives you're left with option c 
she doesn't examine the counter arguments against universal donor registration, that basically means she doesn't look at any counter arguments or sort of drawbacks, negatives, downsides, disadvantages to universal donor registration. That means an opt out system, for example, where everyone is donating their organs by default. So that's going to be the answer here. Now, the answer to question five is 19 and sorry, 19 and 99 percent respectively. We just went over that. So 12 percent and 99 percent respectively. I'm getting my words mixed up. So it's option D. And question six, the answer to this one is option A. Um, now, the author is obviously arguing that opt out registration is much better and you'd save more lives. If Argentina switched to this, for example, this piece of evidence is saying that Argentina switched to it, and the waiting list for donor kidneys was cut in half. So that means if you talk, if you think about a waiting list, uh, that means people who are waiting to be donated a kidney. So less people are waiting because more people are getting their kidneys donated or getting like receiving donated kidneys. So that's obviously a good thing. So option A is going to be the answer there. The other options are not supporting the author's argument okay let's move on to the second comprehension okay if we look at question seven so which is the antonym for beneficial so antonym means something that means the opposite means that it is you it is useful or it is good for you so what is the opposite of beneficial something that is bad for you or something that is harmful for you so that's going to be option c question eight according to the passage good sues do all of the following except what? So the answer here is going to be A, feed their animals. The passage talks about good zoos providing animals with good food, space, education for people and donating money to help animals. So it doesn't say anything about feeding them, which is why it's going to be option A, because it says do all of the following except, right? Okay. Question 9, according to the passage, seeing an animal face to face at a zoo, which of the following? Uh, so, the passage here says it makes them more likely to want to help protect wildlife. If you look at the passage, it says that seeing animals up close makes people care more about helping and protecting them. So if you look for that quote in the passage, you'll find that the answer is B. Question 10, which of the following pieces of information? would fit best in paragraph five. So this is tough. You want to read the entirety of paragraph five and gorge what paragraph five is actually talking about here. So I've got the answer is A. Some endangered animals have difficulty finding mates and breeding in the wild. These animals often have an easier time mating and producing young in zoos. Zoo breeding therefore helps to increase the number of endangered animals. So the reason we chose option A, the answer is option A, is because paragraph five talks about zoos helping endangered animals. So that's the context of the paragraph. And explaining how zoos help animals breed is gonna fit in with this idea, right? So we're gonna choose option A for that. Question 11, the main purpose of the passage is to do what? So. It's not to explain why keeping zoos and animals is cruel. That's sort of the opposite of what we're doing here. Show readers how bad zoos are harmful to animals. Again, no. Now, discuss the pros and cons of zoos. It does do this. And it also convinces readers that some zoos are helpful to animals. Now, it again, it's talking about pros and cons. If we're looking at the purpose of the passage, the best place to usually to look is at the conclusion. And what it says in the conclusion, which is the last paragraph, it says not all zoos are perfect. Responsible zoos have many advantages for animals. It talks about all of these different things, right? And you also, if you look at the introduction, this will give you some more context as well. Over a hundred countries in the world today have zoos and many of them think that keeping the animals in cages is unfair, right? So this is the proposition of this passage. It's talking about how people think this is unfair. Now, what does it do after that? It pretty much spends the entire passage talking about 
first of all, of course, that some of them aren't that great for animals to live in, but also all of the beneficial things about zoos. So convincing the reader itself that zoos can be a good thing and helpful to animals. So option D is going to be our answer here. Question 12 for the new comprehension. What are tectonic plates? So up here it says, under the surface of the earth, you've got huge slabs of rock. These are called tectonic plates. So that's going to be option D as our answer. Question 13, you've got your options up here, A, B, C, D, E, right? It says, we have to look at the cause and effect, right? So when two tectonic plates get stuck as they rub against each other, what happens? So the passage says that force builds as two plates that are stuck keep trying to move, okay? Finally, there is enough force that makes the plates move again. All the plate, all the force built up makes the plates move quickly for a few moments. So what is the effect? Well, it's going to be option C, force builds up as the plates move. For question 14, so for question 14, the plates move quickly for a few moments. This basically happens after there is enough force to make the plates move again. Okay, so that is option B, there's enough force to make the plates move again, right? D, sorry. Question 15, the plates move quickly for a few moments. What what does, I mean, what happens after that is this movement causes the surface of the earth to tremble and shake, which is option B. Question 16, an earthquake is so weak that people do not notice it. What effect does that have? Uh, well, if we look for that in the passage, Here we go. So people do not notice that the earthquake has happened and that means they cause no damage. So that's sort of the effect that happens. And then there's a lot of damage to buildings and other structures. So that's the effect. What caused it? A powerful earthquake. That's going to be option E. All right, question 18. What is one step people have taken to try to prevent structures from getting damaged during an earthquake. So we've got over here, in places where earthquakes tend to happen often, you try and build new structures that are strong enough to stand up to most earthquakes. Here we go, structures strong enough, option B. Question 19, why are many older structures often damaged in an earthquake? It says the worst damage happens to older buildings. Uh, because they were built before the new rules were put in place. So, option A is the answer there. Okay, for these questions, I'm not going to go through the explanations. I'm just going to give you the answers. Option C, tigers, lions, and monkeys. So tigers, lions, monkeys, right? So you can have a comma because it's a list. You don't need a comma after an and, so you're going to have option C. We bought milk, butter, tea, and sugar. So again, don't need a comma after and. And this is the only option that we've got the commas in the correct places. Option B is the answer there. Question 22, Rome, Paris, Madrid, and London. So we should have commas here. You don't need a comma here, but you can have one. So... We and London. Okay, so we don't need a comma after London either. Okay, prefixes. What we want to put into here is any of these options. So international for this one. This one's going to be rebuild. Forecast here. This one is going to be inhuman. Question 27. We got incorrect, unsafe. It should be disobey.
I guess we can use the options up here as well. For some reason it wasn't listed here, but this would be disobey. And then indirect here, indirect. Okay, so write the base word of the underlined word in each sentence. So is it going to be view, tell, and view? Right, so you can see re is the prefix. Now for spelling, there isn't much to do here if you got any of these wrong. You should look at your homework report, look at the answers, and make sure you memorize the correct spelling so you don't make that mistake again. For close, we can go through the answers. So here it's going to be in the days when one one had to be careful about witches. For question 41, it's going to be now this good man felt he could not look after the baby properly. For question 42, um, it's and when her hair shining like golden silk. So that's going to have to be an adjective there. For question 43, You've got, and send her out in all weathers uh, to do difficult tasks or errands. So errands the only words here. Errands basically means tasks. Uh, question 44. Children used to play in summer, was all brown and barren, save for the snowflakes. So it's talking about the garden here. It says go quickly and don't loiter by the way. So that means stay around and sort of waste your time. Loitering around, for example, in a park. Not doing much, right? And as she ran, her beautiful hair got all tangled and she almost tripped up. Question 47, it's going to be the black dog came by and ran off with the bunch of candles. This one is going to be and when she arrived at the set of steps once more, the same thing happened. For question 49, it's going to be to no purpose for alas, when she laid them down in order to part her beautiful golden hair. All right. Let's look at measurements and scales now. Um, give me one second. This is just something that you sort of have to learn. A good way to visualize this for length is like on a ruler. So you've got 100 centimeters. That will equal to one meter. Okay. And that's, let's say, a 100 centimeter ruler would be one meter. If you had, let's say, 200 centimeter rulers. That would be one meter plus one meter or two meters or 200 meters, 200 centimeters, right? So that's how this sort of works. So what is one meter equal to? Is equal to 100 centimeters, like I just mentioned there. What is one kilometer mean equal to? So kilo means a thousand, so it's going to be a thousand meters, okay? And if you try and think about how many centimeters that would be, well, if one meter is a hundred centimeters how many centimeters is a thousand meters going to be it's just going to be times by a hundred right you're not getting asked that but just keep that in mind one centimeter so this is 10 millimeters again this is on your ruler if you have a ruler you will be able to see that every centimeter you've got there is actually 10 millimeters in that centimeter now one meter is how many millimeters so again you have to think through this so if one centimeter is 10 millimeters, think about what is 10 centimeters or 10 centimeters. If you just add these up, you got 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters. If you just keep going, it's going to be 100 millimeters, right? It's going to be 10 times 10. So that's 10 centimeters. What is 100 centimeters? It's going to be 1,000 millimeters. And we all know that 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. So our answer here is going to be 1,000. So that's how you can do it. Another easy trick to, to know is when you're going from meters to kilometers, it's always times a thousand. 
when you're going from centimeters to meters, it's always times 100. And when you're going from millimeters to centimeters, it's always times 10. So you can sort of look at this map. Um, I'll try and map it like this. M, K, M, C, M, and M, M. So you can look at this. So if you're going to go from millimeters to meters, you have to do times 10, then times 100, right? So you have to go along this map backwards and forwards. Let's say you're converting one kilometer to what? To how many millimeters? Well, you have to divide it by a thousand. Sorry, you have to times it by a thousand, times it by a hundred, times it by ten. Okay. So when you're going backwards, you have to times. When you're going forwards, you have to divide because less kilometers is more millimeters. If you understand that. Anyway, one kilogram. So this is a kilo. It's just a thousand grams like that. One gram is a thousand milligrams. So one liter is a thousand liters. And one centiliter, sorry, one liter is a hundred centiliters. So you can try and visualize that as well. So how are we going to do these ones? You can see centimeters to millimeters, you have to times by 10 or divide by 10 if you're going the other way. You're converting backwards. In meters to centimeters, you times by 100. Uh, or divide by 100. So this is really this exercise. <laughs> you just have to copy the top and the bottom. But what you can do is use these. You can try and remember these to convert backwards and forwards. Okay. So measurements and scales. Again, use the above page if you're struggling. But look at this. So 2.93 meters to centimeters. How do we convert? So if you look up here, meters to centimeters. You have to times by 100. So let's times this by 100. That will give us 293. Question 66. Convert from centimeters to meters. You can... Oh, no, there we go. Centimeters to meters. You have to divide by 100. So that will be 0. Point, sorry. It'll be 2.92. So when you divide by 100, you should remember this from your previous homework. So you move your decimal point one, two places to the left. Okay, so 2.92. Question 67, meters to millimeters. So if you look up here, uh, it doesn't look like you've got that option here. But what you can do is you can first convert it to centimeters. So you have to times it by 100. So let's times this by 100. That will be 1676. And then you can convert from centimeters to millimeters. So then you have to times by 10. Okay, so that's going to be 16760. Okay. For this one is 6,487 millimeters. Again, you can first change it to centimeters, so that's going to be 648.7 because you're dividing by 10 and convert centimeters to meters. So you divide by 100, you go 1, 2, 3 points backwards, that's going to be 0 0.6487. So just note that this one is 6,000, that, that is a comma right there. And if it was 6.487, you probably would have got an answer of 0 0.006487. Anyway, that's fine. Just note that this is the option that's available in the homework app. So you're going to have to read that as 6,000. Okay, for the final one, question 69, kilometers to meters. So we know that you just have to times by 1,000. That's going to be 27430. Okay, measurements and scales four. So how do we work this out? We have to first figure out the intervals. So it goes from 70 to 80. What is each line going to be? It's going to be 72, 74, 76, 78, and then 80, right? So we know it goes up by two. So this is going to be 76. For this one, this is the middle line. This is going to be 350. We have to figure out how much is each of these mini lines. So it's going to be probably 310, 320, 330, 340. So 340 kilograms, right? For miles per hour, if we look at this, we've got 82, 84, 86, 88, 90. So we're, they're going up by 2. So that's going to be 86. And for this one, 3.2. 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So these are going up by 2. So it's going to be 3.2. So what we're doing here is a figure out look at how many lines there are, how many spaces there are. So since there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces, when in reality there is actually 10, you've got 2.1, 2.2, etc. If there's 5, that means each time we're actually going up by 0.2. So 2.2, 2.4, 2.5, sorry, 2.6, 2.8, 3. So you have to figure out what is the interval here before you can figure the rest out. Okay, so 2 meters is how many centimeters? You should know that it's just times by 100, so it's going to be 200. 3.6 liters is how many milliliters? Again, times by 1,000. 3,600. 3, the circle, a most likely metric measurement of the height of a normal door. So how tall is a normal door going to be? If you think about your own height, you're probably somewhere around... 110 centimeters, 120 centimeters, something around that. How tall is a door? Almost double your height, probably. If you're 140 centimeters, maybe it's like one and a half times your height. So, what would that be? Around 200 centimeters or two meters, okay? So, Tom bought a melon with a mass of 1.56 kilograms. What is the mass of the melon in grams? So, a grams compared to kilograms is times a thousand so it's going to be one five six zero okay 2.5 liters convert that to milliliters going to be 2500 shown by point array in grams so point array is right here again we have to figure out what is the interval so if you look at this there's four lines here until we get to five so if you actually count this you've got Maybe 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2 2.6, 2 2.7, 2 2.8, 2 2.9, and then 3 kilograms, right? So this is probably going to be 2.6. This middle line is obviously 2.5. 2.6 kilograms converts to 2,600 grams. How many grams must be added to the amount marked by point of B to make 4 kilograms? So... Right here, we're at 3.4 3 kilograms, or 3,400 grams. How much do we have to add to get to 4,000 grams? 600 grams, right? The difference here is 600 grams. Okay, question 81. Juan is 128 centimeter tall. How tall is he in meters? So that's going to be 1.28 if you divide it by 100. Tracy walked 15.3 kilometers kilometers how many meters did she walk so if you times that by a thousand you get 15,300 meters a bucket contains 4,000 grams so that is 4.5 kilograms and if it says 33p per kilogram so we have to figure out how many kilograms is here so it looks like the intervals there's 10 intervals between 3 and 4, so that means each interval is going to be like 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, etc. And if you count up, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's 3.5 kg, and it's 36p per kilogram, so we have to times them together. So if you remember how to do decimal multiplication, you know that you have to do long multiplication like this, and then you... You do it normally, and then you look at how many decimal points there are. There is one, two digits behind the decimal point. So what you do is once you've figured out the actual multiplication, you'll, you'll get something like this. There's two digits behind the decimal point. So you put decimal point two digits in front. you got 12.60 as your answer. 12.60 pence. Sorry, actually. So it's... <laughs> I made a mistake. It should have been 36 times 3.5 because it's 36 pence times that. So what we should actually get is 1260. There's only one number behind the decimal point here because it's 3.5 and times 36. So we put one number behind the decimal point. That will give us 126.0 pence is how much it costs. If you think about how much is that in pounds, it's going to be one pound 26. When Kim weighs herself, the dial on the scales 
point to here. So what is that? So you can look at the middle. It's going to be 46.5. Because if you count up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. It's going to be 6, 7. 46.7. Question 86. Which of the following is most likely is the most likely mass of a pencil? So think about how light a pencil is. So you know that an apple is roughly 100 grams. A pencil isn't heavier than an apple. So it can't be any of these options. So it's going to be option C. So, question 87, Farmer Jones fills 32 bags with carrots. Each bag contains the same mass of carrots. The total mass of carrots is 16 kilograms. What mass of carrots in, the, in grams is in each bag? So, if there's 32 bags, and we've got 16 kilograms total, Let's say they're split evenly. Each bag is going to have two kilograms. Divide 16, 32 by 16. You'll have two kilograms in each bag, which is 2,000 grams. Question 88. How many more grams of grass seed do you have to buy to make the amount up to 700 grams? So what we've got here is 560 grams so you have to look quite carefully here but you can see it's just above the middle line which is 550 so how much more from 560 to 700 it'll be 140 grams question 89 you decide you only need to buy 335 grams of grass seed how many grams needs to be removed so i believe it's asking removed from a 550 so what you're doing here is you're doing 550 minus 335 right to figure it out uh, probably you want to put 335 at the top actually um, but either way you can do that in your head as well where you should get 65 115 215 grams 225 I made a mistake in the calculation all right, question 90. How much water is there in this measuring beaker? Measuring beaker. So, you really have to zoom in here. You can see this is right in the midline between this line and this line. So we have to figure out how big are these intervals, okay? So you've got here 50 something 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 so i'm going to assume 50 60 70. you're going to have 60 here and 70 here 80 90. so what's going to be between 60 and 70 it's going to be 65 uh, but the options you're given on the homework app is only 66 which is the closest so you have to assume there's just a bit of like we can't see it clearly enough and we have to choose the closest option, which is 66. Okay, which container will hold about one liter of water? So one liter is a thousand milliliters, right? Think about your bottle, it's probably around 500 milliliters, your water bottle. So which one of these is gonna be able to hold that much water? Not a teacup or an egg cup or a teaspoon. A small saucepan could, and I think a dustbin would be much too big. It would hold much more water than your bottle. So if you think about a small saucepan, it can probably hold two bottles of your water. You can look at my sort of bowl. This is around one liter. So a small saucepan should be good for that. Okay, nonverbal reasoning matrices. Now, with these ones, all you have to do is, with the four-sided matrices, you have to look at how do we get from left to right, or top to bottom okay left to right i can see there is a pattern it's sort of just reflected so if you reflect this option we should get option b for question 93 if we go left to right so for question 93 
looks like we've been given a hint so the rectangle keeps moving so instead of it being like a pattern where you go left to right and then you sort of do the same thing here it's probably a pattern where it snakes like this so you can see the rectangle goes from the right and then it goes left a bit and it goes left a bit I guess it should be always the left here so it'd be option C again the rightmost shape should stay black oh yeah question 94 we've got left to right you have got a reflection so you got um, ideally you'll have a reflection which will look like either A or B and the colour should be changed from left to right so you should have option B question 95 what you've got going on here is a black this arrow is reflected or like changes direction so we can assume this arrow is going to face left okay second of all the black and the gray shapes swap over so if these swap we'd have option a as our answer Question 96. Puppy is to owl or is to what as kitten is to what. So this is verbal reasoning word analogy. What we have to do here is look for a, a rule that sort of uh, like a rule that, that completes the, the sentence in a, in a way that makes sense. So look for a relationship. So puppy is to what and then kitten is to what. So if you look at puppy is to dog, so and the kitten is to cat, you can see the relationship. A kitten is a baby cat, puppy is a baby dog, or like a small dog, I think is probably yeah. That's all the idea. So 97, teacher is to what as doctor is to what. So we have to look for what what could we be looking for? Perhaps and looking at where they where they work so a teacher works at a school and a doctor works in a hospital so that would be option c question 98 you've got poor is to what as hoof is to what so who has a paw a cat and who has a hoof a horse a cat and horse question 99 chair is to what as bed is to what so what do you do on a chair you sit and what you do on a bed you lie so option b question 100 pig is to what as cow is to what so pig is to pork so you eat pork if you're eating pig and cow if you're eating a cow it's called beef so you got c as your answer okay so question 140 i've skipped the sort of English, the optional questions on the English because they're quite self-explanatory. For measurements and scales, again, similar to how we did this before, if you're converting from meters to kilometers, you have to times, sorry, divide by a thousand. So if you divide 6,950 by a thousand, so you go decimal point moves backwards three times, you should get 6.950. For 72.72 centimeters to millimeters, you have to divide by, sorry, times by 10. But if you're going from a bigger unit to a smaller unit, you times. If you're going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, you, you divide. Um, so it, it seems counterintuitive. It seems a bit backwards. But the reason is, is because you have more smaller units in less bigger units, right? One kilometer has a thousand meters, so to convert you have to divide. And um, so this one you times, that's going to give you 727.2. For this one, you're going to divide by 10, that's going to give you um, 571, because it's 5710, right? For this one, you divide by a thousand, sorry, times by a thousand, you should get 1720. And for this one, you are going to milliliters to liter, you're going to divide by a thousand. So the decimal point is here, imaginary decimal point. Go back three spaces, you'll get 1.4. So these are commas. This basically means 1,400, okay? 
we go on to there's some more maths here unit and scales problem solving workshop so which of these nine so which of these units would you choose to measure the following so you've got the height of a rabbit so a rabbit is quite small um probably the size probably the height of like a ruler um yeah i mean if you if you put a ruler standing upwards that would probably be the same height of a rabbit i'd assume so something like centimeters is, is what i'm thinking for distance between london and liverpool that would definitely be kilometers it's a long distance for the height of a building that would probably be in meters so if you think about a building being like 200 meters tall right and thickness of a coin would be millimeters because it's very very um thin a coin is so the line a b is drawn to scale of one centimeters to one meter write in meters the centimeters the length a b represents so you can see this is 4.4 centimeters so how many meters is that um Uh, one, oh, one centimeter to one meter. Sorry, so that means each centimeter on this ruler is equivalent to one meter on the line. So if this is four point four centimeters, it's going to be four point four meters. Um, so it says right in meters the and centimeters the length represented by AB. So four point four meters is four meters and forty centimeters. Um, so if you think about 4.4 that .4. have a pen here yeah but uh, 0 0.1 meters is 10 centimeters right so 4.4 was it if you when you add 0.4 to it it's going to be 40 centimeters as well all right a map is drawn to a scale of 1 to 2000 what distance in meters would be represented by 6 centimeters on the map so one to two thousand. That means every six centimeters is two thousand actual centimeters, right? So every one centimeter is two thousand actual centimeters. So if you find out how many is six centimeters going to be on this map, it's going to be times two thousand. So if we do that, and that should give us eighteen. Sorry, twelve thousand. So 12,000 actual centimetres. Now, how many metres is that? Well, if you convert between centimetres to metres, you divide by 100. So 12,000 divided by 100 is 120. What a distance in metres would be represented by 13 centimetres on the map. So it's going to be the same. So each centimetre is equal to 1,000 so to 2,000. So we have to do 13 times 2,000, which is going to be 26,000. And how many meters is that? You divide that by 2, you should get... Um, so you divide that by 100, you should get 260 meters. Okay, looking at the weighing scale on the right, what is the weight of the parcel in grams? So you can see there is 100 and there's 200 here. And there is one, two, three. So there's three spaces in between, or three lines in between. That means one, two, three, four spaces, right? So each space is going to be 20. So this is going to be 120. It's going to be 140, 160. Actually, it's not going to be that. It's probably going to be 25, right? So that means if I can zoom in here, this is going to be, don't let me draw, but it's going to be 125, 150, 175, and then 200. Because there's four spaces, that means each times four is 100. Okay, so each space, we have to make sure that it adds up. So, the third space right here, this is going to be 175, like we mentioned. So 
0.175 grams. Parcels are sent in sacks of no more than two kilograms. What is the largest number of these parcels that can be sent in one sack? So if each parcel is 175 grams, if we send 10 of them, right, that's going to be 1.75. Can we add one more to that? Um, 1.75 gram, kilograms, sorry. Can we add one more to that? Um, yes, if we add one more, that will be 1. Uh, let's, let's think about it in, in, in grams because that'll be easier. So 1750, if we add one more um, of these parcels to it, we will get uh, that'll be 1825, 1925 grams. All right, so that's 11 parcels will weigh this much. Can you send one more than that? No, it will be more than two kilograms. So the answer will be 11. Okay. I'm sorry, I, missed, I, sk I skipped out this question. So this one says another parcel of the same weight is added to the scales. Let's rub these out. what we'll be reading on these scales now. So if you double this, so 175 times two, that would be 350 grams. Okay, Gracie bought a 1.5 liter of bottle of bubble bath. After three baths, she had used 400 milliliters of it. So which diagram represents how much is left? So how much, like it's like 400, that's almost one third of 1.5 liters so one third of it would be 500 milliliters right so if she's already almost used one third then there should be two thirds left at least so you can see this is a half right so that's not enough this this is way more has been used same with this and this one not enough has been used so e is going to be the most accurate it's almost two thirds it's a bit more than two thirds of the bowl is still left okay Question 156, Roberto travels by taxi while he's on holiday. He travels 24 kilometers to the waterfall, 15 kilometers to the caverns, and 12 kilometers to visit the castles. So first of all, we have to add all of these up, because it's going to ask us how much does it cost, right? So if we add these up, we should get 17, 27 plus 24 is 40. 51 kilometers okay total which is 5100 meters it says 25p for every 500 meters that's how much he charges so how many 500 meters are in this 5100 right well 10 500 meters 10 sets of 500 meters is 5000 okay so you definitely have to already pay 10 times 25p, which is 250p. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. This is actually 51,000 meters. 51 kilometers, 51,000 meters. So it's not going to be 10, it's going to be 100, right? So he's already paid 2,500p or 25 pounds, right? Now there's another 1,000 meters left that we haven't accounted for. So how much does it cost for him to travel 1,000 meters? Well, if 500 meters is 25p, and 1,000 meters is just going to be double that, which is um, 50p. So it's going to be, the final is going to be 25 pounds and 50p. So 25.50. Question 157. Mrs. Tan has full two liter bottle of lemonade. She pours 1250 milliliter glasses of lemonade. How much lemonade does she have left in the bottle? So, um, 
she pours 12 glasses at 150 milliliters we have to do 150 times 12 okay which is basically 1500 plus 300 which is 1800 milliliters so how much is left well the difference between 1800 and 2 liters is 200 liters so the answer is going to be 200 question 158 so a hospital's kitchen staff are cooking lunch for the patients they cook four kilograms of meatballs and twice that in weight of pasta so eight kilograms of pasta each lunch serving of meatballs and pasta weighs 250 grams how many servings can they make so each person is basically eating 250 grams right so if we add these together that's 12,000 grams and each serving weighs 250 so if we divide that how many 250s go into 12 1200 i said 12,000 my mistake is 1200 here uh, how many 250s go into that it will be four you can make four servings um Ah, uh, yeah, no, it is 12,000. I was making a mistake. So 12,000 grams. So it'll be 4 kilograms plus 8 kilograms is 12,000 grams. Um, so if we make 40 servings, we, will, we would have used up 1,000, 10,000, sorry, grams. So what we've got left here is 2,000 grams or 2 kilograms of meatballs and pasta how many how many servings can we make of that not 10 because 10 would require 2500 grams so it's going to be eight okay 25 sorry, 250 times eight is going to be 2000 right so make 48 servings in total exactly question 159 Mrs. Conway visits her daughter who lives 150 kilometers away. She can travel nine kilometers on half a liter of petrol. So, kilometers, and she can travel nine kilometers on half a liter. How many liters does she require to get there? So, if one liter of petrol is going to be 18 kilometers, then, um, Actually, let's, let's stick with nine kilometers, right? That's the easiest one. So nine kilometers is half a liter of petrol. So how many nine kilometers go into 270, right? Because if we know that, then we can figure out how many liters of petrol is because nine liters or nine kilometers is equal to half a liter of petrol, right? So how many nines go into 270? It will be 30. Can you think about nine times three is 27? Nine times 30 is going to be 270. So how many liters is that going to be? We times the same thing. We times it by 30 as well. So half times 30 is going to be 15 liters. Okay. So that's how much it's going to cost 15 liters. So it's getting messy. I'm going to try and rub, out, rub everything out again. But the answer there is going to be 15 liters because 50 lots of nine kilometers will get us to 270. So 50 lots of, 30 lots, sorry, I, I think I said 50 for some reason. 30 lots of 9 kilometers will get us to 270. So therefore 30 lots of a half a litre will get us to um, our answer, which is 15. Okay, which container holds the greater amount here? So 750 millilitres or 0 0.5 litres. So this, litre to, litres to millilitres is times by 100, so that converts to 500 milliliters okay times by a thousand sorry so that's 500 milliliters is 750 so which one is bigger obviously option a question 160 how much more does it hold give it in milliliters so 250 it holds 250 more so you're basically just subtracting them okay 162 three quarters of a liter is what 
in milliliters. So one liter is a thousand milliliters. So three quarters of that. If you think about one quarter is going to be 250, three quarters is going to be 750. Easiest way to find out what one quarter is, is you do half and then you half it again. So half of it is 500, half it again is 250. Okay. What's one tenth of a liter? So this is just divided by 10, in my opinion, right? You use the denominator, you divide it by 10. So divide 1,000 milliliters by 10, it'll be 100 milliliters, okay? And that's also how you can figure out a quarter, right? So you think about one quarter of 1,000 milliliters, you just divide it by 4, okay? All right, we're on to the NVR section now. So this is matrices again. So as last time, you want to look at the pattern that's going from left to right and then left to right. OK, so what's happening to me, it looks like we're getting a full circle, but it's split up into three sections. So this one, we should get a full square split up into three sections. Now, it looks like this gap. Right, this half should have the full side, so we should have a full side like this here, and then we should have the split sides on the left. Okay, so that should be option A. Question 165. left to right this triangle moves behind it and it turns white okay so this thing is going to probably move behind it and change color so not a okay second of all it's rotated pointing this way so it should be b or c and finally the back shape which is the rectangle comes to the front and it rotates as well so you can see C has got the pentagon or the back shape at the front, meaning it should be that option. Question 166. So left to right, the shape changes color to a crossed one. So it should be either of these two options. And the outside shapes, they lose their lines. So it should be option A. Question 167. We've got this rotates um, 45 degrees and then it loses a section. Okay, so it should rotate and then lose a section. So it should be option D. Question 168. left what's happening left to right so this shape is moving downwards basically so this should move downwards and the you can see these two swap patterns so we should have the gray on the left and the light gray on the right okay so that's going to be option a question 169 let's keep scrolling down it's changing from left to right This rotates 90 degrees, so it's vertical now. And then you get the same thing, but you can see these are inverted, the arrows are inverted. So these should duplicate, right? We should have inverted arrows, a bit like this. And then we should have a vertical arrow, so this is going to be option B. Oh, it's not scrolling down. Okay, next question here. We get four side shape here, and then the outside is four more five sided shapes. So, so you can see four sides, four more shapes added. 
we've got three sided shape here so probably three more shapes are added that have one more side which is going to be option a okay question 171 so this shape stays in the same position and you just get a new thing coming up okay you get a line and a diagonal so we should have this shape staying at the same place but at the back okay so you can see it's at the back in option c and option b and d and you get this new line that's added you can see right here which is a replica and you get this diagonal one added as well so you can see option b matches that the best this d has got this thing on the wrong side it should be on the left and this one hasn't got this shape on the front so option b is going to be the answer there okay word analogy so with these ones there isn't too much explanation to be done you have to find a rule that matches and then you apply it to both so fish is to what and bird is to what so what does a fish do it swims and a bird flies shout is to whisper as bold is to timid so these are both antonyms flower is to something as coarse is to something so this one's a bit more um difficult the only thing i can think of here is um homophones so words that sound the same so flower and flower sound the same and course and course sound the same that's going to be the answer probably question whatever number this is seventh is to what as july is to what so july june july so june comes before july and sixth comes before seventh so that's going to be the rule there whole is to whole as grown is to grown so that's going to be the homophone thing again where they sound the same four is to four as two is to two again they sound the same and apple is to cider as a grape is to wine so these are different drinks that you can make out of apple and grape okay and i think that's the end of the homework so hopefully that was useful